As a result, British command, control and cohesion began to suffer. The British troops did their best, but constantly found themselves in danger of being cut off and had to make hurried withdrawals. Soon, withdrawal turned to retreat. Pre-war beliefs in Japanese military incompetence were being dispelled the hard way. Eventually, on the 31st of January, the British withdrew across the causeway separating Malaya from Singapore. They prepared the bridge over it for demolition. Once the last troops had crossed over to Singapore, the bridge was destroyed. In the meantime, the British General Archibald Wavell had been appointed Allied commander in the region. The first of many such Allied command and control steps. He had visited Singapore and warned the British government that it could not hold out for long. Churchill, however, was insistent. The British people had been led to believe that Singapore was impregnable. But this did not stop British families from being evacuated by ship. Many would never see husbands and fathers again, while others would be lost at sea. Japanese air and artillery bombardment increased. On the 8th of February, 1942, they crossed the causeway and landed on Singapore. The final battle now began. The demoralized defenders even though they had just received more reinforcements from Britain, could do little to stop the victorious Japanese. On the 15th of February, the British, accepting that further resistance would merely cost needless lives, both military and civilian, surrendered. It was a moment of triumph for Yamashita, but for his opponent, General Percival, one of bitter humiliation, as it was for the British as a whole. No less than 130,000 British and Dominion troops were made prisoner. The focus now switched to the Dutch East Indies. Here, the Dutch had reasonably well-equipped forces, but they had no combat experience. Japanese landings had begun in mid-December in North Borneo, Sarawak and the Salives. They spread to Borneo and Sumatra and finally, by mid-February, to Java. This oriental blitzkrieg was, as it had been for the British, too much for the Dutch. Thus the Dutch were forced to concede defeat, and by early March 1942, another plum had fallen into the Japanese lap. Besides attacking British and Dutch possessions in Southeast Asia, the Japanese had also made the Philippines one of their initial targets. The first Japanese landings had been made on the 10th of December, 1941. Because these landings were dispersed, it proved impossible for the overall Allied commander, American General Douglas MacArthur, 
to prevent the beachheads from being secured. This was because his forces were not strong enough to guard every coastline that made up the Philippine Islands. He therefore initially planned to conduct a fighting withdrawal and wear the Japanese down. MacArthur's problem was aggravated by more Japanese landings on the southern island of Mindanao and on the west coast of Luzon. On the 24th of December, the Japanese made another landing on Luzon, this time on the east coast. This created a multiple threat to Manila, the capital. MacArthur feared that defending the city would cost many civilian lives. The Allied forces therefore withdrew to the Bataan Peninsula west of Manila Bay. The Japanese entered Manila, which had been declared an open city, on the 2nd of January 1942. For three months, the American and Filipino troops managed to hold the Japanese forces on the Bataan Peninsula. Both sides became short of food and were ravaged by disease. But the Japanese continued to try and break through. Filipino President Manuel Quezon, seen here visiting Roosevelt before the war, wanted to end the suffering to his country. But Roosevelt was adamant that resistance must continue, although he did arrange for Quezon to be evacuated to Australia. He also ordered MacArthur to Australia in order to set up a new Allied command in the Southwest Pacific. Here MacArthur was greeted as a symbol of American support for Australia. He vowed, however, to return to the Philippines. On the 24th of March, 1942, two weeks after MacArthur had left for Australia, the Japanese, now reinforced, launched a bombing offensive on the American and Filipino positions. On the 4th of April, Japanese troops attacked the Allied defences on Bataan. Five days later, the Allied forces here surrendered. This left just the island fortress of Corregidor at the entrance to Manila Bay. Japanese troops assaulted this on the 5th of May. Two days later, General Jonathan Wainwright, MacArthur's successor, surrendered. Allied troops falling into Japanese hands were to experience privations that they could have scarcely imagined. Of the 12,000 Americans captured on Bataan, only a third survived the war. Many perished on the infamous Bataan Death March which they were ordered to make immediately after the surrender on Bataan. Many British and Dominion prisoners were employed as slave labor to build the Burma-Thailand Railway. European civilians who were unable to get away were also interned, including women and children. They too had to endure many hardships. Indigenous races also suffered. Another territory to fall to the Japanese was Burma, Air raids on Rangoon, the capital, preceded the invasion. As was the case elsewhere, these raids were designed to lower morale, especially that of the Burmese themselves. 